morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And before we get started, let's get today's shout out out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Spiron. Spiron was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus was his shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And I have a review of a neat. This isn't actually a new quadcopter. I reviewed this at back in 2015. Uh, but a neat quadcopter, uh, all the same. When this first came out, this is the Wingsland. M1, also known as the Wingsland Scarlet Minivet when I reviewed it back in 2015. But when this first came out, this thing was $600, folks. This was not a cheap drone. Uh, the reason being, it's a very capable drone. And the, another thing it's got that makes it very capable, it has actually a three-axis pan-tilt controlled zoom, zoom, or actually pan-tilt controlled zoom. Uh, I keep wanting to say zoom. There's no zoom, no zoom. But it does have pan and tilt control, <laughs> three-axis gimbal. Um, let's look at it. Let's go over it real quick. Again, it's a big brushless motor drone. This is a monster, folks. Okay, uh, as such, I don't recommend this for beginner pilots. Beginner pilots are always looking to get the best bang for their buck, but uh, this one might be a little bit too beefy for a beginner to fly and kind of unsafe because it is not lightweight. I, I forgot the exact weight. I'll put it here what the weight is <laughs> uh, with the battery installed, but this again is not for beginners. If you're in the USA, you are going to need to get you know register this particular drone. Okay, beginners do not buy this. If you're brand new, get something smaller, safer. But uh, if you have been around and you you know this is be your second or third drone, this might be appropriate for you, for you especially in the price, current price range. But again, I mentioned it has brushless motors. Um, it has a 5200 milliampere hour battery, 3S battery, a huge battery. That's supposed to give it, uh, I believe, 20, they predict 25 minutes flight time. I'm going to guess it's uh, more accurate is around 15 minutes. We'll take it out today and fly it and confirm that. Uh, again, I did mention that it has a 3-axis gimbal that's controlled with pan, tilt, pan and tilt. <laughs> okay. Um, on top of that, this camera has an FPV transmitter that transmits on 5.8 gigahertz analog. What does that mean? That means you don't use your phone for this. You are to view the video from this, the FPV, FPV video. I'm getting all tongue-tied today. You need to use uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, analog receiver system. What that is, is what you use on what most people use on racing goggles, okay? Racing goggles use 5.8 gigahertz analog. So, uh, luckily, this drone comes with a monitor, and I'm gonna go over that here shortly, a 5.8 gigahertz monitor, ready to fly with that monitor. So, that makes it cool, but you can also use goggles with it. In fact, I wanna use goggles with it when I go flying today. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I, I like goggles better. They're easier to see in sunlight. Let's see, what else do you get in the package? You get a safety instruction. Please read before flying. It goes over the safety, uh, important safety points of this drone. And you get a user manual. Now this user manual is very detailed, but unfortunately, every page on it is in Chinese. Which tells me this is a, a Chinese stock. It came off the, the shelves in China and the low price of this is because they're probably trying to uh, lower the stock on the shelves. A lot of, uh, particularly in Wingsland, is probably uh, releasing this at a lower price to, in, a, in effect, get it off the shelves. So I, I don't expect to see this remaining on the shelves for very long. So if you want to get this, grab this at its current price. If you're thinking about it, now's the time to get it. Now, the controller on this. Uh, lots of buttons and switches, folks. And they are not uh, labeled. So what I recommend doing is what I've done here is label them. And since the Chinese ma manual or the manual is in Chinese, uh, you might want to take note of what I, you know, what these uh, uh, position of the switches do in my particular review right here. This one up here in the upper left shoulder is for selecting between position, uh, circle position, which is all the way forward. This drone will actually circle position and uh, film that position. Uh, normal flying, normal GPS or normal uh, without GPS flying by putting it in the manual or in the center position there and bringing it all the way forward will put the drone into headless mode. Uh, so for most flying you're going to want to confirm and verify that this switch is in the center position. 
Same with this one. This one has manual manual flying, which means altitude hold flying without GPS, turning the GPS on or off. Center position will turn the GPS on. Uh, and uh, return to home is all the way down like that. So for most flying, you want to make sure that this one is in the center position also in GPS. This one in the center position for normal flying. This one in the center position for GPS. The buttons on the right here. This one here switches between video then menus and this this does have menus control menus for the camera that you can view on the monitor screen okay and you you can access those uh, menus by putting this into the center position there and then you can adjust uh, through those menus I believe by the up to uh, actually I think you need to use the these uh, controls here I'll confirm that when we go out in the field but um, you can access again the menus for the camera controlling the camera uh, through the controller and if you put it all the way down here you can take a picture so video menus and picture now this button here is a spring-loaded switch and this is for activating the shutter of the camera so if you're in video and you want to start taking video you press like so and let go and it will start the video camera always remember to stop the video camera uh, before shutting down the aircraft by one more flick of that switch here if you want to take a picture put it all the way down and again, do a little flick with the switch, and it will uh, take a picture also. Now, for arming the motors, you bring both sticks down and out, and that will start up the motors, okay? And to disarm, you bring the drone down and land it, and bring the throttle down and hold the throttle down like so, and that will disarm the uh, quadcopter and sh shut off its motors. Other things you get in the uh, box, you get a little prop tool here. This, all this does is it, you grip onto the motor, while you're screwing on the propellers and speaking of the propellers you get one set of propellers one basic set there are no spares that's the downside of this i wish they include spares with this but i believe there are since this drone's been out for many years there are wingsland um, propellers on the market they're still out there that you could probably buy especially on sites like ebay one other thing i forgot to mention the camera even though it's 5.8 gigahertz uh, it does record to micro sd card and there's the micro SD card slot in the base of the camera. So that is the Wingsland M1, also known as the Scarlet Mini Vet. Pretty capable drone went back in its day, and it still is pretty capable today. Um, a lot of people complain about, uh, there are some complaints about this drone. If you go online, you'll find a little, some complaints. But all in all, when I flew mine, mine flew relatively good. Uh, I had some complaints about the camera. It had a widescreen lens, but if you're not, you know, if that's not a big deal to you, uh, you know, there is some distortion in that lens, and you'll see, probably see that today when we go flying. So let's take it out in the field, see how it flies. So hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and another beautiful day out here in the desert uh, with the Wingsland M1 uh, Scarlet Minivet. Let's take it for a flight. I'm going to show you how to set this up, folks, to get it ready for its flight. Um, you know, it's a little bit complex, not super complex, but... You know, most of these GPS drones, this one included, requires some calibrations, particularly of its compass, to get it started. But let's uh, start it up, and I'm, I'll show you how to do that here shortly. Uh, you turn on the power of the transmitter first, and make your, sure your switches, particularly these two here, are in center position. And if you're planning to take video, put this switch into the video position, okay? Center position for GPS and for normal flying, and video position for this button here, okay? And with the transmitter on, and also I'm going to turn on the receiver, which is, there's a button in the back here, folks. You just slide to the left to turn it on, and the receiver is on. And notice the way I got my uh, antenna tilted. The reason I'm doing this, folks, is this will give me nice horizontal um, reception on of FPV with the antenna pointed like that, downward like that. It's particularly if I hold the controller like so. Okay, that should give me best reception. And for the transmission antenna on the transmitter, and I, I'm going to keep it tilted like this. But when I do it like this, I have to make sure that I keep the flat portion pointed toward the drone. So wherever the drone is, i got to keep this transmitter pointed toward the drone to get best range. Okay, just a little bit of antenna orientation <laughs> techniques. Okay, now we turn on the drone. Now this battery has these buttons on the side. These buttons are just for to let you know what the uh, power level of the battery is. It does not turn the battery on and off, folks. It's just power level on the battery. And I'm going to keep those LED light bars on 
to let me know what the power level is, particularly when I come in for landing. Now, inside here, you've got to be very careful. There's a little cable here that is for upgrading the firmware of the drone. So you want to avoid that cable. Put it in this little compartment there to get that, that cable out of the way. And make sure that you line up the connectors with these two poles on the drone. And slide the battery in, like so, to turn it on. And put the drone down and let its um, gimbal calibrate. Make sure the gimbal looks calibrated. It's nice and steady. Now, the first thing. Notice we got flashing light, flashing blue. I don't know if you can see that. That means we don't have sufficient satellites to fly. When that turns solid, that means we have sufficient satellites. And we also need to do a compass calibration. And right now we got a solid green light on the bottom. And when to do a compass calibration, folks, you flick this switch up and down five times and then put it in the center of a GPS position. And I should right now be having flashing lights on the bottom, flashing green, and I do. Now to do the compass calibration, we have to turn the drone horizontally on the ground. And you've got to do this fast. You can't do this doing a compass or a, uh, the compass dance that you normally see folks do. You can't do that with this one. You've got to do this fast. One. You've got to do it five times. Two. Three. Four, at least five times until that green light stops. Okay, it's flashing rapidly and now it's solid. So compass calibration is complete because we got a solid green light. And we got solid blue light, which tells us we have sufficient satellites to fly. And looking at my screen, on my screen, it says we have eight satellites. So now I'm gonna go put on my goggles. I'm gonna be flying with this with the goggles, even though I got the screen. I like my FXT goggles to fly. <laughs> long distance flying so hold on folks we'll use both this and i'll be able to see both this and my my goggles because of the way my fxt goggles are designed so hold on and we'll go for a flight okay <laughs> before i put on those goggles i wanted to show you how to get it into the air i'm sorry i was jumping ahead of myself here uh first thing i want to make sure it's in video and i'm going to start the video recording by flipping this switch here and we get a, a red light showing up on our screen here that tells us we're recording. And then to arm the motors, bring both sticks down and out, like so. And notice it automatically takes to the air in a hover when you do that. So I'm gonna take it up a bit more, right to about there. And I'm noticing that I am seeing uh, the propellers showing up. Now let's, to, to bring us, uh, to avoid those propellers, I am going to move the gimbal downward by pushing the button downward on this so we don't see those propellers anymore. But I want to see a little bit of the horizon. Okay, there's its camera, folks. It actually looks kind of good. <laughs> I hope it's coming out nicely. Uh, we have 10 satellites now. It's working very well. Uh, I'm going to go put my goggles on and we're going to take it out for a long distance flight. So uh, let me land it one more time. And I'm going to take it off from over where my wife's sitting over there, and we're going to fly it from over there. So hold on, folks, and we'll go flying here shortly. Okay, I got my FXT goggles on. We're recording there. Uh, starting the motors again by bringing both sticks down and out. And this time it's not taken to the air like it did that first time. That, that was unusual. But let's give it a little throttle and have it take to the air. And we'll plop it right there for a few seconds. Um, and then push forward on the stick and set it up on. So we're going to go see, uh, we're going to take it out to it's a good distance. Since we're out here in the desert, I can do that. And hold on, folks. I got my, I'm going to tilt my uh, the pan to the left a bit because I think my pan's off a little bit. So there we go. Push it forward again. I straightened up the uh, goggles. And I want to see those mountains in the distance too. Let's, let's raise it up. Well, that's, that's about right right there. Okay, we are 187 meters out. Going forward and upward and raising the goggle or raising the gimbal up a bit. You don't want to see the propellers and we're not. We're not very high, only 10 meters up or eight, yeah, nine meters up. Let's go up to about 20, 20 meters. 
Okay, 326 meters odd. Pretty good distance on this. Now I'm looking at my screen. The FPV screen, folks. Okay. And I still have good, good signal on my FPV screen. And on my goggles also. So we're going out a little bit further. One thing I'm not seeing, though, on my screen is battery power. Oh, no, I see it. I see the battery power. I got further. 438 meters out, folks. Ooh, there's a nice patch of flowers over there I see. And I still have signal on this uh, monitor screen. The old monitor screen, with, which came with the original M1, um, was terrible. It was a little postage stamp monitor screen with no antenna on it. Uh, this one's very good. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with both of these screens. Okay, I'm looking at flowers down below. Hold on, we're right over a patch of flowers. And it's getting a little bit fuzzy right there, but let's show you a patch of flowers right there. Bringing the gimbal up again. And let's turn to the left now. We're 612 meters out, folks. And I still have reception on both FPV and control. Getting a little, little bit scratchy there. It's 643 meters, 660 meters. Uh, however, my receiver screen, it's getting scratchy on my FXT goggles. Let me raise up my antennas. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> that'll help. There we go. Still have good reception. So going out by some more, 708 meters. And I, I could actually see that thing out there too, that big orange drone. <laughs> 760 meters. Okay, we are at the edge of its range here. It's starting to get a little bit wobbly there. It's 771 meters. Let's go out a little bit further. 800 meters. <laughs> and I still have FPV reception on this little monitor screen. It works very well. Okay, now I don't know why my, my uh, you see that folks, my, uh, whatchamacallit, gimbal there, went a little bit wonky there, 850 meters, I don't know why it did that, but it's, ah, return to home, okay, it's lost signal, it's lost control from, control signal from my receiver, so it's, okay, and then it stopped to return to home, I'm going to do a manual return to home, we're right at the edge of its range here at 850 meters, folks, so we're doing a, man, I'm going to uh, click the switch right now, and, now, I have commanded it to do a return to home. Let's see how well that return to home is. Okay, and it should be coming back. Okay, it is coming back. 826, 816. And through this whole flight, way out there, I was getting excellent reception on this monitor screen, folks. My wife's recording me right now while it's coming back. <laughs> Look, just to show, prove it, out there 800 meters, well, 730 meters right now. So I have reception on this uh, little monitor screen. And you can see it in daylight very well. So I'm going to stop using this goggles once this returns to home. And we're going to finish out the flight using the monitor screen only. You really don't need these goggles. It's a very bright screen in sunlight. I'm, I'm surprised, actually, how well it's working. Okay, 600 meters out. Coming back. 576 meters. This is a good long-range flyer. You know, this is greatly improved over the original M1. I, I guess over the years they've updated the firmware on this, finally. <laughs> when this first came out, this had a lot of problems, folks. It did. But I'm, I'm not seeing any of those problems with this current version. It's actually working quite well. And especially its uh, FPV receiver screen is working excellent. Coming back, 382 meters. Let's see how accurate that return to home and landing is. We're going to let it land also once it gets back. And in the meantime, I'm going to take off my goggles here. Since they're not neat, I'm going to put them down. And I'm going to take the hat from my wife too as it's coming back here. Thank you, my love. And centering it on my hat, her head. And you can hear that thing miles away, huh? And I see it, big orange. It is big and orange, and there's a big uh, raven going after it. It couldn't be going after it. It is going after it. <laughs> it is going after it. It's not even going after that big orange thing. Look at that, folks. I don't know if you see that or not. It's pretty funny. Is it going to come back after it? He's coming back. Here's that raven again. 
It's, uh, it's usually I chase the ravens. The ravens don't normally chase me, but <laughs> he's, he's interested in my drum. So there it is up there in the sky, folks. 11.3 volts. We still got plenty of power on it. I'll tell you, this particular drone is probably the best bang for your buck in the under $200 range if that price remains under $200. You know, this is kind of a steal right now at that price because it is a very capable drone, very capable. Okay, once it lands itself, let's see how accurate that landing is. Pretty darn good. Okay, with that in mind, let me stop the video recording on the drone and also on my uh, FPV goggles. So hold on, folks, and then we'll start off in a second flight uh, to look at uh, circle me, circle position. Okay, I'm going to fly it again without the goggles this time, just using this screen here. Um, uh, remember to put it back to GPS, folks, or it won't take off again. So if yours is having a problem arming, make sure you are in... GPS mode and also normal and to our, our let's start the video camera one more time making sure we're in video and starting the camera and camera is recording I can take my glasses off when it's up close here I can see better <laughs> okay to arm this motors bring it down and out like so motors are started and give it a throttle take to the air and we're gonna select uh, circle position it and pressing that switch uh, all the way back like so and then I think you need to pull back on the stick to adjust its radius and then if I remember correct oh there we go pull back on the stick to adjust whatever radius you want and let me move the pan so it's centered on me and there we go not too shabby how about pull it back even more Okay, I want to see what it does here. Does it adjust? It's adjusted. I pulled back of the stick some more, and we got a little bit of a long range circle position. And right now, battery voltage is 11.2, still plenty of battery voltage. Let's stop circle position because that's kind of a, uh, uh, you know, it's nice to have, but not the greatest. And I'm centering the camera too. Uh, I can see it right now we are centered. And let's go out and try to find my wife and dog. They're at out and about walking taking a walk with my dog my wife's taking the dog for a walk in other words let's lower that gimbal down too so we don't see those props so where are they they should be down this road somewhere i'm looking at the screen trying to find them did i pass them already no 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 going forward going forward maybe i did pass them already Wait, wait, wait. No, there they are. I find them. There they be. Now, the resolution of this screen is not the best <laughs> of the this monitor screen, although you can make out objects. There's my wife and dog down there. And right now, I'm noticing a little bit of toilet bowl action there, folks, which means I probably should come back and give it a calibration. So we're going to come back. I'm going to manually fly it back. And we're going to do redo the compass calibration. Okay. That should be coming straight back toward us. And for this, since I'm noticing some wobbling there, I'm going to go to um, manual flying with altitude hold. I just switched to altitude hold. Manual flying. Bringing it back. It gets a little wobbly there and manual flying. Hold on, I'm going to stop it right there and go back to the GPS. Okay, manual, GPS, and coming forward again. Okay, that circling stopped. It's flying real well now, so I don't know what that was. Turning to the left. Flying nice and fast. This flies very fast for a GPS drone, folks. I am in GPS, right? Let me stop it for a second. Flying sideways, too. <laughs> am I in headless mode? I think I am in headless mode, folks. No? Normal? Circle? Circle? Normal? 
So pushing forward on the stick, there's forward. Let's come down a little bit lower. Ah, okay. Now I'm pushing forward, and when I turn, it's turn, it's flying sideways, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, we are not in headless mode. Let me stop it right there, point it toward me, and pushing forward. Now it's flying normal. But watch, watch me turn, and, and turning yaw only. And notice, it takes a while to to turn in, or. It eventually turns its nose forward again, but it doesn't do it very rapidly. So let's bring it back. Probably need to use some yaw or some banking with your turns with this particular drone. Okay, we are getting low on battery power. <laughs> so we're probably gonna have to call it quits here at this point. Let's see, what battery power are we at? 11.0 uh, volts, uh, yeah. I'm gonna bring it down there. You know, you can go down to actually, with 3S battery down to nine volts, but not a good idea. Okay, uh, okay, the battery alert is stopped. Oh, it started again. We're gonna leave it right there at this altitude here and finish it off up close. Now, I'm gonna stop this video recording, like so. And I haven't taken pictures yet, folks. So, I hit the menu and we are in pictures right now. Let's try a picture. I got my shirt today, folks. One picture, two picture. Three picture and a Hulk Hogan picture there. <laughs> so, and finally going back to video. Oh no, I haven't shown you the menu. Well, it's kind of hard to show you the menus, but I think I, my FXT uh, monitor is still recording. Now notice the menus are in Chinese. Um, let's land this right here so I can talk about these menus and hold the hold the throttle down until the motor stops. And you hear a beep. Uh, notice these menus. Um, the way you, okay, I got it in a menu position right now. Uh, the different selections are resolution, uh, high, high, dynamic range, or top one's resolution, the second, center one, second one's resolution, or exposure, third one's dynamic range, and I forgot <laughs> to tell you the truth. Let's see, how do you control this again? I'm trying the different buttons. I think it's menu up and down on the, uh, this controller? No, that's for. Oh, never mind, folks. To act to work these, you have to use the little button in the back, the gimbal button, to navigate through the menu. So this first one is. Let's take a look again. It is resolution of the video, video resolution. Second one is um, resolution of the photos. Right now, I got it set to three megapixel, but again, it has five and ten megapixel. So, and the next one is dynamic range. And one, it's probably on and off. And the next one is exposure. And the next one is, I don't know what this next one is. It's again in Chinese. And again, this is the Chinese version. <laughs> they didn't seem to uh, update the menus for the English version. I don't know if it's possible to s select uh, English in this me or menu or not. But let's come back out of the menu. Again, this is the camera menus. And there are also menus for the monitor too you can adjust the brightness and contrast of the monitor using these buttons on the front of the monitor so that's it folks uh, we got 11.4 volts again but that's at rest but that's about its flight time it's safe flight time you can take it down or run it down to, to a full 9.0 volts that's its minimum voltage where you're going to start to uh, damage the drone i don't recommend doing such if you want that battery to let or damage the battery if you want that battery to last, I recommend landing when it tells you to, when you get that alert. So that's the Winsland M1. Hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.